Here's Woj on a quick update in terms of what he thinks the Knicks could be doing here at the deadline. Uh, Here it is on NBA Today. Here is Woj. They made their big trade with OG Ananobi. It has paid off for the Knicks. They want to keep themselves in position to do another big one for an all-star, all-NBA level player that very likely would be in this offseason. That player's not available now, but certainly players like Bruce Brown uh, in Toronto now, Alec Burks, uh, Jordan Clarkson in Utah. The Knicks have the assets. They have an expiring contract in Evan Fournier to be able uh, to do a trade in the short term for some bench help going into the postseason without compromising themselves on going big game hunting in the offseason. They How do you react to that, man? Well, Woj is Leon Rose's mouthpiece, so I guess we're not getting DeJounte Murray right now. <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. I guess not. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I guess that was out the window. Adam. Yeah. Bye bye. But to me, it means like they're looking at someone like Donovan Mitchell. Maybe DeJounte Murray is another option this offseason. Unless he goes to like the Lakers, then I don't see that happening. But it, it sounds like the Knicks are trying to situate themselves for someone like Donovan Mitchell this offseason, which means as working at the Burks, the Brogdons, yeah. the Terry Rozier's, the Jordan Clarksons. I wish it was Colin Sexton and not Clarkson, but hey, that's another story. Looking for the role players, man. Looking for the role players. So then who's the guy so then who's the guy that we're going after now, CP? Who's that guy in between? That is why we're here, man. Because you as our resident GM was working the trade machine. You did hear Woats say the letters A B. You did hear Alec Burks. For one, Alec Burks. Uh, because the contract for Evan Fournier is more expensive than Alec Burks, they throw in Marcus Sazer because I don't see them throwing in Killian Hayes, nor do I think the Knicks want Killian Hayes and want that project. Uh, and then they give back Detroit their first rounder to get Alec Burks because, look, man, you're talking about Marcus Sazer, talking about Alec Burks who's on a one-year deal. You don't need to give up much to go get these guys, okay? It's a Fournier and their own pick. Give it back to them. Move along because, look, we're not getting that thing anyway. Yeah. That's top 18 protected. I'm not even dreaming about that pick. Yeah. There's no, and I don't even know if they're going to be able to be better the next year because that thing always drops down to like what, from 18 to 16 to 14. That thing ain't going anywhere. Yeah. So give it back to them. It's not worth any while. And go get Alec Burks for the rental because, look, man, for, for what Alec Burks is, it's a solid isolation score off the bench. Oh, you, you don't that. say. I'm don't not, say. I wasn't He's familiar with Colorado. I wasn't CP. familiar with his game. Word. So then if you're familiar with his game, where's that Shaq mean? That's what we that's what we need. Yeah. I was yeah. not familiar yeah, with the game. That. We, <laughs> we need that, that one. Yeah. Wax poetic about your guy over here. <laughs> Listen, man, it's A B. He's a bucket. We we know this, man. He is instant offense. He is the modern day microwave. If he was any if he but the problem is with A B is his inconsistency. He went through a huge slump out there in Detroit. And I don't know if that was, you know, trying to carry the, this team of bums every night or was this his typical A-B slump? Because at the end of the day, if he was a consistent player, he'd be an all-star. He, you know what I'm saying? He'd be an all-star. Yep. He's a bucket getter. But, you know, we've seen guys like this all the time, and those guys are better served off the bench. But it's a role that the Knicks need to, need to tap into. However, the contract, the contract, do they? How do they get Burks, who's making ten million this season? The, the contract that the Knicks gave him, by the way. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this is the contract that the Knicks gave him. But after that, he's a free agent. So, were they willing to lose a Fournier contract, and then you lose Burks? So then, how do you go out there and try to get Spider if you lose that money? Do you? Is it a sign and trade with Burks? Mm. Now it gets a little more sinister. Is it a potential sign and trade with Burks in the offseason? He's going to get a bump anyway. Pause. 10 million, right? He's probably get to like 15. He'd probably get up to what? 15? Or maybe yeah. a little more? 
probably 15, that. 15, something like that. Maybe. Has the bunion cleared? Because that man had a foot injury after Tom Tito ran him into the ground after playing point guard. Yeah, he just needed like a year of rest, man. That's all right. He's back now. He just, yo, he just dropped 30 off the bench. Okay. He just dropped 30 off the bench. Hmm. He said, well, all well, these guys, we got Killian Hayes and all the, what, what are we doing, man? This is Burke's high, man. Shape up or ship out. Get buckets. Get buckets against the Milwaukee Bucks. I don't care who it is. Dame, Giannis. That's what we do. Three-point specialist. If they can make it work, if they figure out a way, go get them. You know, but it's just a contract thing. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Bruce Brown out, who after the Knicks versus Raptors game seemed to be auditioning for Tom Thibodeau and the Knicks. <laughs> Talk about transition. Here's a guy in transition. I'm a dog. I play extremely hard on both ends of the floor. I can do just about whatever Tom Thibodeau needs me to do. So that was uh, Bruce Brown after the game. Seemingly auditioning here for the Knicks. Good Lord, man. Keep yeah. yourself together. Keep, your, <laughs> keep yourself together. So that's so Man that, played one game in Toronto. It's like, please get me out of here. Yeah, Come on, man. Yeah. You know, after winning the championship last year, boy, he, they sent him to the wall. You know, they sent him to a work in progress in Indiana. Okay, that was fun. He went to Vegas for the in-season tournament. Now mm. they, they kind of sent him to the wall a little, a little bit. So uh, Bruce Brown has to be like, you know what? I got the ring. I got the bag. But, boy, it's tough. But anyway, sir, you're Bruce Brown trade scenario. Well, this is not what I want. This is just what reports are out there that Toronto wants. Okay. This is the this is the this is the rumor. They want a young guy and a first rounder. So you got to throw Quentin Grimes in this. This is essentially what they would want: a Grimes, Fournier, and a first round pick. And mm -hmm. I don't know if it's Dallas's, if it's a Knicks, if it's a Knicks, maybe you go top eight, top ten protected, whatever it may be. But this is essentially what the, the the Raptors are looking for. I would say absolutely not. Don't get me Bruce Brown at all. Yeah. I find him to be very redundant next to Josh Hart. Uh, could he? Is he a guy that can run the pick and roll a little bit? Sure. Bruce Brown can run the, a little bit of the pick and roll. He can attack out in transition. He can do a little bit in the half court by getting downhill. But he's not that shooter that we need, man. Like yeah. We can't just add another guy who can't shoot the three ball well. Doesn't really take mid-range jumpers like that. And now we're going to say, all right, this is cool. We're going to have Bruce Brown getting downhill, Josh Hart, who works better out in transition and can sometimes work well off a curl. What are we doing, man? Yeah. It, it's it's just too redundant of a player. I like Bruce Brown, the player. Yes, very versatile on defense. Solid wing. But I don't think this is the guy that you need. And, I mean, even if you look in fan spos, you know, how, how they categorize him, secondary ball handler we need a guy who's going to be on Primer. the ball who can be a scorer initiate and do some facilitating i'm with you 100 percent, man i am out on bruce brown we don't need that i like him as a player i loved him as, as a role player on the on the championship nuggets he was a perfect fit for them and fitting in as that glue guy between their two all-stars and their two engines their dynamos he fit in very well as a secondary ball handler. He could give you some playmaking. He can give you some shot creating a little bit. And he can knock down a shot for you here and there. You know, and when I say shot creating, I'm talking about a little bit. Like, you know, knock down a little jumper off the short roll with like two dribbles. You know what I'm saying? Like nothing crazy. Yep. So, but for this team, like you said, it's, it's like Josh Hart 2.0. Where on the good nights, it could look good. But on the bad nights, it could be a negative. And that's, it's, it's, that's just not the role that we need for this team. If you didn't have a Josh Hart, I would say, okay, nice. Oh, for sure. That's a nice utility guy to have, but you already have that in Josh Hart. You need scoring, a little more playmaking, a guy that can go out there and get you a bucket when things tighten up. That's not what Bruce Brown's role is. So I would be out on this one. I would be out on this one, man. What say you, good people in the chat? What do you guys think? Where are you on the Bruce Brown stuff? Let us know, man. Let us know. Uh, I'm thumbs down on that.